Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Wednesday, August 21st. Today is day 320. I apologize, yesterday I got the number of days wrong um, when I introduced myself. I said that it was like day 310 and it was day 319. Since October 7th, so I got the number of days incorrect. Um, today is day 320. Um, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with the Egyptian President al-Sisi yesterday in a continued diplomatic push to secure a ceasefire in Gaza. The New York Times reported, and U.S. President Biden is expected to speak to Prime Minister Netanyahu later um, on Wednesday, so today. That's according to Axios. Prime Minister Netanyahu is once again, quote, sabotaging the talks, end quote, for a ceasefire hostage deal with Hamas, a source involved in the negotiations reported to the Israeli news, Haaretz, adding that his statements indicating that Israel will not withdraw from the Gaza-Egypt border at a time when sensitive negotiations are underway for finding a solution there, only making it more difficult to find a solution, increasing suspicions, signaling to Hamas and mediators that Netanyahu is uninterested in a deal. Israeli and U.S. officials believe that the current ceasefire hostage negotiations between Israel and Hamas are, quote, on the brink of collapsing, end quote. That was reported by Politico adding that the current proposal, which was tailored to the demands by both Hamas and Israel, um, according to U.S., Egypt, Qatar, and Israel, the agreement was accepted by Israel, but Hamas has said it would not accept it. You'll recall, initially, the um, conversation in Doha last week was supposed to be based on the May President Biden three-part plan, and then that was um, not the basis of the negotiations. Um, Israel has accepted the current terms. Um, it has been said that Hamas would never accept the negotiations if a permanent ceasefire agree um, was not agreed to. Um, there's been no conversation about that that I've read about in the news as of yet. An Egyptian official with direct knowledge of negotiations told the Associated Press, Americans are offering promises and not guarantees. Hamas won't accept this, adding that the proposal does not clearly say that Israel will withdraw its forces from two strategic corridors in Gaza. One is the Philadelphia route. We've been talking about this. This is between the border of Egypt and Gaza and the Netzarim corridor. That's that corridor, which is the road that has been built um, between the east part um, of the Gaza Strip uh, and the Mediterranean Sea, right across the middle of Gaza. It divides South Gaza and North Gaza. And Israel is saying before they will allow the majority of the population of South Gaza. So the majority of the population was displaced. Um, they're now in South Gaza. And Israel is saying before the population can return to the north, they would have to go through security checks at the Netzarim Corridor. Um, before they're allowed to return home, which is a major point of contention in these negotiations. So Israel has offered to downsize its forces in the Philadelphia, and um, this is reporting that they have uh, uh, not said that they would um, eliminate their presence, but that they would withdraw some presence from the area. And Hamas has said this is unacceptable. The hostage family forum said the full and direct responsibility for the fate of negotiations rest on the prime minister, um, that his incessant attempts to blame the negotiation teams, mediators, the press, and hostages' families, and even the hostages themselves, are pulling wool over the public's eyes and the entire world. If he is so successful at conducting negotiations as he describes himself to be, he should fly out himself and act in return act to return the hostages that were abandoned on his watch for the last 10 months. That was from the Hostage Families Forum. Hamas directly criticized President Biden yesterday, saying his comments at the Democratic National Convention were backing away from a ceasefire deal and that they demonstrated a blind bias towards Israel. The rare direct criticism casts doubt on the prospects of an agreement, which the Biden administration had hoped would be reached this week. That was according to the Washington Post. A senior U.S. official pushed back at reported comments by Netanyahu, saying that he had convinced um, Secretary Blinken that a ceasefire deal must see Israeli troops remaining as a part 
um, remaining in Gaza. That was according to BBC News. You'll recall they were calling these the Tokyo principles, which the Biden administration has been holding to since um, early on last fall. The Tokyo principles were where the Biden administration said five things. One of them were that Israel should have no permanent presence in Gaza. So it would be a huge deal if the U.S. was backing out of that. The Israeli airstrike on a crowded area in central Gaza killed at least nine people yesterday, the New York Times reported. The IDF said it had attacked terrorists who were operating in a compound in Gaza City that had primarily or previously been used as a school. During a tour of Gaza, um, Defense Minister Gallant said that the Hamas Rafa Brigade had been dismantled and that remaining tunnels would, tunnels would be easy to find and destroy. He added that the most important thing in his view was to remember that the war's goals are both regarding Hamas and the hostages looking north now. Five Gaza border communities near Az, Beri, Na'al Az, Kafar Aza, and Yad Mordecai announced that they would join the Kibbutz Nerim's boycott and would not participate in the government's organized state memorial ceremony taking place commemorating the one-year anniversary of the October 7th massacre. The Hostage and Missing Families Forum said they would also not take part in the ceremony. Protesters marched in front of the Israeli military's headquarters in Tel Aviv yesterday to demand a ceasefire deal and the release of the hostages, according to the New York Times. And Turkey's foreign minister spoke with Blinken yesterday about the latest ceasefire negotiation expert um, efforts, according to Reuters. The Israeli military and Lebanon's Hezbollah traded crossfire border strikes today, leaving at least one person dead deep inside of Lebanon. Israel said it struck Hezbollah's weapons storage facility, and in response, Hezbollah said it targeted an Israeli military base in the Golan, according to the New York Times. And Haaretz reported that Hezbollah fired some 50 rockets from Lebanon into northern Israel, many of which were intercepted. A man in the northern Israeli regional council was moderately wounded. A senior Iranian military official hinted yesterday that a retaliation against Israel over the killing of Ismail Hananiah in Tehran might still be further delayed, and a U.S. official announced that he believes that Tehran is exercising restraint while still waiting for Gaza ceasefire negotiations to proceed. There was a report um, in the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal about that. Finally, there was a lot of conversation leading up to the Democratic National Convention about how disruptive pro-Palestinian protesters would be. And the National Catholic Reporter published an article about how people of faith have been engaging and have been present there, including Christians for Ceasefire, which is a group that we work alongside. Many churches from Middle East peace constituents and friends engage with that group. Um, at the event, the Harris campaign sponsored a panel that discussed um, events related to Gaza, and it included pro-Palestinian activists who highlighted the war's toll against Gazans. At the protest, Mark Frey, who joined protests with Christians for Ceasefire and works um, as the finance manager for community peacemaker teams, which Churches for Middle East Peace also partners with, said he showed up to communicate to decision makers at the convention that Israel must be pressured to accept a ceasefire. Sylvia, um, a Latina woman who's from a parish, a Catholic parish in Chicago, said that her faith inspired her to come to the protest, despite some of her friends' concerns about the possibilities of violence. She said Jesus was an example of standing up for things that are unjust or not right. She said that in his time, he was seen as a revolutionary that caused a lot of tumult and concern because of his ideas. She believes that Catholics and Christians must stand up for all of the oppressed. She said, these are not my words. These are Jesus's words. And it's in his invocation Monday night, the DNC, Chicago Cardinal uh, Kupich praised, prayed for peace, especially for people suffering, suffering from senselessness of war. He said, may our nation become more fully a builder of peace in our wounded world with the courage um, to pursue a loving future together. May we as individual Americans become more fully the instruments of God's peace. And at the protest, Reverend Beth Johnson, a minister of the Unitarian Church of Hinsdale in the Chicago suburbs, said that her denomination has condemned the violence in Gaza and called for a ceasefire. She said, my faith is grounded in a radical love that calls for the liberation of all. I can't be silent because silence is complicity. So may we not be silent and continue in our efforts of calling for a permanent and lasting 
ceasefire. Amen.